Welcome to Engine Adventures. Today we have the 2020 Honda Ridgeline. Should have started right here because you can't tell if it's a Ridgeline or a Pilot or maybe even a Passport. But once you get to the side, you can clearly see it's got the truck bed on it. And an interesting truck bed it is. So this is the RLTE trim level. I believe I have that right. It might be RTLE. Anyway, uh, there are no added options on this. So everything on this vehicle comes standard with this package. There is a seven pin plug, but no trailer brake controller. So you have to add that on your own. And this interesting looking receiver hitch there. And it says 5,000 pound towing capacity and 600 pound tongue weight. And it doesn't say anything about weight distribution either. But the real trick with this truck, of course, is the tailgate. So, got a normal tailgate there. This is all plastic. But then, you have got this 54 gallon uh, storage area, I guess. It can be a cooler, it's got a drain right there. Let me flip the tailgate the other way so I can reach in there. So by now you all know about this, but right here it says release. Stick your hand up in there. Tailgate open sideways. I'm on a hill, and so it's sloping downhill to the right, and the tailgate stays open, which is good. We'll talk about that more in a second. But anyway, so now I can reach this real easy with that tailgate open that way. Um, this is on a tray. It's got those anchor points right there. You can just pull the jack out and then pull that out, but this whole tray will slide out if you undo those anchors in there to get to your donut spare tire. It's kind of in between. It's bigger than most donuts, but it's still a smaller tire. Uh, it's kind of a good and bad thing that it's there. It doesn't get dirty. It's all protected from the elements, so the spare tire should last longer before it rots out or anything. But if you have stuff in the bed, you have to unload everything to fix your flat tire. Um, so this, I mean, if you're going to a luau, you can chuck your pig in there and fill it full of ice, and hopefully you don't get too much ice and smelly pig back in there. But then when you're done, just drain it all out. Uh, great for tailgating. Most of the stuff I do, we're not right next to the vehicle, so it's actually better to have a cooler than this, but there is a ton of storage space there for other things. You can divide it up, put some dividers in here. I doesn't come in with any standard as far as I know, um, but I'm sure you can buy whatever dividers in there to divide that up. Um, it also has some nice LED bed lighting, and these hooks, two in each corner, the ones on the front or on the bottom, and then on the wall at the top and on the back, both sides are just on the wall. Um, I did pull a four-wheeler, or throw a four-wheeler in the back of this, uh, it was a Kawasaki Prairie 650, so it's about, not the biggest you can get, but pretty close to the biggest four-wheeler. I know those Polarises, even the 500s are bigger and heavier than the, the other uh, competitors, bigger engine ones. Um, but it did fit. I, the wheels were about here on the tailgate, and these tie-downs were, anchor points were great. Had no problem securing it and keeping it in there while we transferred it where it needed to go. In here, we have a 110 volt, it says 115 volt, and uh, you can have up to 400 watts, and it says with the engine running and in park. I was trying to convince my wife to throw her pressure cooker back here, and we'll just tie it down and go for a drive somewhere and jump out and eat. So, uh, one thing about this is this is actually electronically locked and actuated now. You hear it beep when I hit the button. So that is uh, uh, interesting to me because your tailgate locks with your key and unlocks with your key. So it's locked anyway. You can't get to that with the tailgate locked. But then it has a double system where that locks as well. So kind of cool. Uh, the tailgate is heavy, not damped. And it doesn't bother me too much, but it is a little bit heavier than some other vehicles, um, especially in this mid-size class. Um, overall, I don't know what my feelings are on the Ridgeline yet. So 
Think of this as a Subaru Baja, if you guys remember that Subaru Outback that they chopped the back off of and threw a, tail, a bed in it with the tailgate. Um, this is pretty similar to that. It's a little bit bigger and pretty, I don't know, it's a great vehicle for a lot of people. This is all they need. Uh, for me, like I said, with that four-wheeler, it took up the whole bed and no extra space. So if I were to you know, go out with the four-wheeler and with my family inside, I wouldn't have enough space for the rest of my gear, most likely. Um, but speaking of the inside, the, I'm locked out. There we go. So the, the rear seat, well, both seats, front and rear, are quite wide, but you don't get a ton of room this way. So I could feel my daughter kicking me through the seat there a few times. Um, but they do, well, I'll have to go around to the other side to show you this. They do fold up. So as far as mid-sized trucks go, and this thing locks itself all the time. Every time you hear that beep, it's locking or unlocking. So anyway, this, as far as mid-sized trucks go, this one has a lot of room, but you can fold up both seats like that. So you have a pretty flat load for it. You still get this in the way, but you've got a lot of space there. And then one other thing I wanted to mention is this is how you anchor the seat. So that child seat over there, let me put this one back down, is anchored in. So. And just do this one in the middle it has this loop and what you do is you have that strap that comes over the back of the car seat and you run it through that loop on this outside one you can probably just barely see it in there anyway run it through there and you bring that strap all the way down and hook it there uh, so it's a little different but it was easy enough once i figured out how to do it and then of course you have your regular anchor points all the way across um, and you could fit three car seats across that a lot of those mid-sized ones it would just be so tight that would be tough to do um, I guess while we're here in the back you've got a couple of USB charging ports right there on the bottom and that's it on this trim um, I imagine in the upper this this is close to the high it's kind of like a mid-high trim there are a couple trims above this with the, the black series or black uh, whatever it is being the highest um, so there may be more features with those ones. This one does come with the moonroof, sunroof, if you're into that. Um, and then front passenger seat, it was pretty comfortable. Um, one weird thing, you can disconnect the seat belt. So I wonder how far forward this seat goes and folds and all that stuff. So you can disconnect the seat belt and get it out of your way if you're hauling something in here. Um, anyway, that was kind of interesting. And... Uh, it does have the rear window that slides there in the middle decent size I don't think I put that armrest down. There's two cup holders in that big armrest there in the middle and then Honda esque here Just a uh, good use of space You've got little storage cubbies in here a couple extra power outlets Down there an auxiliary input for headphone jack style input and then up here this one connects your phone to the infotainment system and another 12 volt power outlet. No wireless charging on this trim. Um, heated seats for the front. And let me jump in the, well, let's take a look at the engine first, and then we'll jump in the driver's seat. Right here, you can lock the trunk actually. So that the trunk is the uh, thing in the bed that you lift up and open, so it is on. So whenever you lock the truck with the keys or it locks itself, it goes ahead and locks the truck for you. So I believe they call this engine the Earth Dreams. And it's beeping at me because the headlights are on, which this does fail the fog light test. You can see the headlights and fog lights are on. Let me switch it over to the running lights right here. And it says the fog lights are on. Oh, nope, it does not. So that's just the daytime running lights. So. Um, but anyway, the fog lights are not on anymore, so you have to have your headlights on for the fog lights to be on, which, as you know, makes your fog lights useless. There you go. Your Honda Earth Dreams with Intelligent VTEC. I uh, can't remember the horsepower. I think it's 280 off the top of my head. We'll have to get into that. I'll post it on the screen, the horsepower and torque. And it has a 9-speed automatic, so a little bit better. I'll put up... I might have the video posted before this one gets posted of a 2012 Honda Pilot 
the same thing as the Ridgeline, just the SUV version. And it couldn't make it up the test hill, even with all four wheels on the ground with good traction, it just didn't have enough low end torque. I just did that test hill with this nine speed, there's plenty of low end torque, it made it up that almost no problem. It slowed it down a bit, but uh, another thing I do like, so you see where this one mounts here to hold the hood up. There's also one there. So if you want to get crazy, I know this, you guys aren't getting the view of this, but there we go. So you can put the hood up and that is putting the hood up. So you can get it completely out of your way, get down in here, do whatever you need to do when it's in, in that setup. It gives you tons of space to work, which is pretty cool. All right, let's see. Let's jump in the driver's seat and fire this thing up and maybe drive it a little bit here. All right. Starting to rain, but not windy, which is good. Normally it's, well, lately it's been windy up here. So, all right. You have a heated steering wheel. If you can find the button, you can't actually see it very well when you're driving. I just saw the edge of it and realized it was there. Let me turn off the air conditioning there and gets decent fuel economy. So I've only done a little bit of idling, but 22.4. That was uh, including a trip with a four-wheeler in the back going about 85 miles an hour over, I don't know how many miles it was, 60 miles maybe. Um, nah, something like that. Anyway, so it does get pretty good fuel economy. You can hit this button for the economy on. It just uh, makes your throttle less sensitive, makes it drive a little smoother to save you fuel. Plenty of buttons down here. It has the lane keep assist and the lane departure warning, the parking sensors, forward collision, traction control, cargo lights, and that's to turn on the um, inverter. That's to turn on the inverter for the uh, plug in the bed of the truck. And then your mirror controls, two memory settings for the seats, and then you can lock the windows there. So the kids in the back can't roll them down. Pretty basic fuel door, hood latch. Um, sorry, I should have gone through the rest of this when I was doing the heated seats. This side on the left controls your radio and also controls the screen up there. So you can push these two and it will adjust the screen up there. And that is not true because this one is adjusting up here. But we'll go back to maps. But the so the bottom one must be adjusting it. Oh. I'm on the wrong side, maybe. Anyway, oh, I, was, I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to figure that out later, I guess. I know I was messing with it while I was driving. but and then here's all your cruise control. Uh, down here is how you adjust those. And the, this is all you get. So this, this is every screen. You have your trip meters, both A and B, uh, your compass, tire pressure, oil life, and that's it. You can also, you know, reset it and change the units if you want. Right here is... Also, the lane keep assist, but it's more aggressive. I don't know. I haven't figured everything out yet, but this actually shows it on the screen up there. You see that pop up. Um, and then you have the cruise control, and this sets your distance to the car in front of you. You see those bars changing, hopefully. I'll zoom in on it. And then um, this one turns everything on or off at the same time. And then of course your normal cruise control set and adjust the speeds there. Paddle shifters attached to the steering wheel. Um, over here, the heated seats. I think we already talked about that. I'm not sure, but heated front seats. And then it is a push button or drive by wire as they call it. So park, you just push it. You have to have your foot on the brake. For reverse, you pull this back. Again, you have to have your foot on the brake. Neutral, foot on the brake, hold it down. And then same thing, you push it once for drive. Again, for sport mode. Auto start stop. Uh, this one hasn't been too bad. I don't know. Again, it's not one of those features that I really like. So, and then this is your terrain modes, of which they're all slippery conditions. So there's no like rock mode. But as you can see there, you got normal, snow, mud, and sand. So we'll go through all that in the off-road video. Um, yeah. Then your your uh, climate control stuff there. And that's about it for this vehicle. This screen, let me flip that back off. Hopefully it doesn't mess up the sound. So this screen is improved, but there's no dials. So say you're listening to the radio and you wanna scroll 
I mean, we're on uh, XM. So if you want to scroll 100 stations away, you can go to the category and select it. Hopefully you have a preset on where you want all your stuff, but you have to just kind of go through one at a time. So it's not the worst because you can control your presets. These will go through your presets here. And if I hold it down, it'll go through them one at a time. But you do have to hold it for quite a while. But it's overall, I like it. I don't like missing the knobs. Like I'll go up here, adjust this vent, and I'll hit this with my side of my hand or something on accident. Um, anyway, it's just kind of sensitive, not my favorite thing. I don't like touch screens a lot, as you probably already know. Um, I like physical buttons for everything. Of course, having the touch screen is nice as well, where you see something and you want to click on it makes it easy rather than using a button to do it but um, i kind of like both so at least all the climate control you have physical buttons for it you can set your climate how you want it without having the screen to find the right screen and work through that um up here garage door openers you, the lights and whatever and then the rear window and the sunroof which it's raining right now so we'll keep it closed Sunglasses, my sunglasses don't fit, but I have some new ones that I wanted to try out. So these ones are a little thinner and they do just barely fit in there. Um, but you have to put them in the right way. So I can't turn them around. I have to put them in like that. It's kind of a pain. So it's still tight, even with these thin sunglasses. Go ahead and throw it in reverse. So I'll have to zoom in on this because the camera's a little far away, but you have three different camera views. This is just the regular kind of a wide angle backup view. That's the normal angle backup. And then you have a close up on the hitch view, which is interesting in a vehicle that doesn't tow a ton, but it does have that. All right, so we didn't go over the pricing on this. Uh, like I said, there are no options. This is the Ridgeline all wheel drive RTL E. The exterior is crystal black with black interior. Uh, seems like Honda did not give us the correct. Huh. Yeah, so we don't have the right Monroney. So I have no idea what this thing actually is. Um, if it is the RTL-E, the base price is 42000 with the destination of 1120 And brings you up to 43140 total for everything. And it does have... 280 horsepower with the uh, VTEC and variable cylinder management, 9-speed auto, IVTM 4 all-wheel drive, heavy-duty automatic transmission cooler, and it is a unibody construction, but it has a boxed frame as well, closed box frame, uh, four-wheel independent suspension, electric power steering, four-wheel disc brakes, uh, plenty of safety features. We'll go over some of that in our drive portion of it but i mean all this stuff is standard on it driver 10-way power seat heated front seats uh this infotainment system it all is standard um, i imagine that it's pretty close to uh whatever that monroney is is pretty close to what this vehicle is can't guarantee that i'll have to look into it a little more and if i find a different price i'll go ahead and put it up on the screen for you now all right, so truck bed audio. This is going to be difficult because it's all going to be copyrighted music that I can play through here. And we were talking about this album called Faces, and he too thinks that that's probably the best album huh. that they've ever recorded. That is interesting. So you can see there are no speakers there, but you can totally hear it inside of it. Of that project, a song that's very appropriate today. And it it's feels like turn it into something everything's good. vibrating all three all sides the so the tailgate's not all right thanks for watching engine adventures review of the 2020 honda ridgeline anyway if you liked what you saw go ahead and hit like hit subscribe comment let me know of any questions or anything you've got what you want to know what vehicles you want to see coming up and have a nice day